welcome to the Battle and the Bride. Good morning and welcome everyone to the Battle and the Bride, where Christ is King and the Church his Bride. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that it's kind of been like off and on posting over the last several months. Um, I'd started seminary earlier this year and just found that uh, keeping up with the social media demands, I mean, honestly, you have to be on there like daily posting and be interacting. Um, I I could not prioritize that over my family, over uh, my responsibilities with you know, work and seminary. So I decided to kind of take a break from that. And it's been inconsistent, admittedly. Uh, but here's the the deal. If you've been following me, you know that recently I posted about losing my job. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take that situation and I'm going to use it on this podcast to kind of walk through this season of unemployment and unknowns. So I'm today I'm starting a new series, and I'm going to call this series The Unemployment Chronicles. So welcome to episode one of The Unemployment Chronicles. And what is the purpose of doing this? Well, the purpose of this series is to encourage anyone who is going through hard times. And I'm going to do this by pointing them to their eternal hope in Jesus Christ. And their temporal hope, well, I mean, it's not temporal, but like they're, they're right now, your hope that you have right now in Jesus Christ and the hope that you have that's found in the truth of the Bible, his holy scriptures. So today's episode, I'm titling Giving Thanks in Crisis, Giving Thanks in Crisis. And what I hope to convey is that even in the most unexpected and life-changing events, we can still rejoice and give thanks to God. We should never allow ourselves to despair. There is always something to be thankful for. And uh, this isn't just a Pollyanna-ism, even though I I really do like that movie. And uh, I am probably often accused of being a Pollyanna, and I probably kick myself uh, in the gut a little bit too much for, uh, for, you know, let's play the glad game. But there is truth in that. Um, But before I I get into that too much, I don't want to just start preaching. Uh, Let me tell you the story of what happened. So um, here's the story of my layoff. So leading up to the events of last Thursday where I lost my job officially, um, we had already been having discussions, me and my wife, uh, Cassandra, we had already been having discussions about, you know, our finances. We've, we came to the point where we just realized like we're going through a hard time and we were taking steps, uh, to deal with that. And there were other things going on as well. And, um, the night before actually, I had made a call to to her former youth pastor and was uh, just discussing things that I was wrestling with um, as a man, uh, just my the things that I had, had realized, some of the deficiencies in, in uh, my own personality and the way of thinking and stuff like that. And he was very encouraging, um, loved talking to him. And it was one of the reasons why I, I called him. Um, just to kind of get some perspective on on what you know biblical manhood would look like in this this certain season of my life, um, and and he he was very encouraging and um, and you know loved talking to him. So <laughs> less than twenty four hours later, like probably less than twelve hours later, uh, I'm at work and I work from home. Uh, I was supposed to get on this Zoom meeting with like the entire company. It was like the company State of the Union. I'd gotten invited to a uh, a meeting with a handful of people uh, right beforehand. So everybody they gets on they get on this uh, video call, uh, and uh, the first thing that they say is uh, effective immediately you are laid off, and that's just like boom bolt of lightning. Like oh okay, uh, now no. I have been at this company for 12 years. So this was really a shock. It was a surprise. Um, And so immediately, I mean, I'm listening to what they're saying because they're going through the whole like legal spiel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Here's what you can do. You need to turn in your equipment. And immediately I'm thinking, okay, I need, I need to do something. Like it's like, I no longer have a job. Like effective immediately. I don't have a job. I'm not beholden to these people. I need to provide for my family. 
Um, so I know I'm going to have to tell my wife. I know that I'm going to have to begin doing things. So I um, mean, the call ends. I close my laptop. I shut everything down, close my laptop. Uh, my, my oldest daughter was actually in the office with me when it happened. She was like watching a cartoon in the background. Um, so, uh, she was asking me questions and I just calmly got up and answered her questions. Uh, and my wife met me in the hallway and I, I told her and I could just, I could just see it in her face, obviously. Like, um, if anyone has lost their job, you know what, what that look is. So, um, so immediately it was like, okay, like, I, I'm not going to ask, are you okay? Because the obvious answer is no, none of us are okay. But, uh, I think we, I think we prayed together real quick. Um, and then we, we just kind of checked on each other for a second. And then I began to make calls. I called, uh, I called, uh, her, youth pastor again, he laughed because <laughs> in his mind, he's like, well, God's going to do something. Call my dad, uh, called our pastor and, um, and let them know so that they could be praying for us. And, uh, and then, you know, we just, we had to, to sit there. And of course we've got two little girls and they need our attention in the midst of this crisis. And so we're trying to focus on them and focus on one another, also trying to understand what's going on in our own heads. Um, so, I mean, there were several prayers. I mean, each person we called prayed with us. Uh, and then, you know, as we saw one another, like drifting, we'd pray with one another. And then, you know, kind of got through all of that. And then there was just this lull. And... It was one of those moments where it's like, now what? So my my wife was in the uh, the living room, and I walk into the house, and I'm just like, I just want to get on my phone, and I want to escape. But one of the issues that I was really dealing with was, like, my leadership abilities. Like, I need to be able to communicate where we're going as a man, uh, as, as a family, uh, and that's one of my responsibilities. So, so what I did was I grabbed my Bible and I sat down and I prayed. I just began to pray that the Lord would help me. Um, I knew that I had the need to lead. So, uh, I just, I prayed and asked God to fill me with his Holy Spirit and to help me order my steps in this time because I had no idea. I've never been in this situation before. Like 12 years at a company, you start to develop this sense of security. Like, I'm going to be here till I retire. Um, and that's not always necessarily the case. It's just a hard economic season, season um, you know, which is surprising for, you know, being in the uh, the best economic recovery in the history of or whatever. Um, so I prayed and then I... I was like, okay, I need to just start writing stuff down. So I, I got a piece of paper, pencil, started making a list. So I finished my prayer, started making a list, and this wrote down a, a list of priority needs. And then, I, I mean, that's like, you know, we need shelter. We need food. We need transportation. Uh, we need to be able to pay for our utilities. Wrote down, like, what the, what the minimum – salary would be for a new job that I would be applying for, like just some of the, the like work hours, what would that look like, benefits. And I know, I know you're like, you just lost your job. Stop being picky. But like this, these are the things that I need to have concrete. Like I'm going to have standards. I just lost a job after 12 years. And, and in my mind, I'm a valuable person. So I'm not going to go into it just begging for a job. I'm just, I'm, I need to provide for my family and there are non-negotiables. So that's, those are the things that I laid down. And then the next thing that I wrote down, this was for my benefit, but this is also for the benefit of, of my wife, because I'm, I'm writing this down to show it to her. And I wrote down a, a list and the heading is course of action. And at the top of that list, I wrote a Bible verse and I had read this verse, um, earlier in the morning before I started work, uh, cause that's like my routine, get up, uh, get ready for the day and then go into my office, spend time praying and then spend time reading my Bible. Uh, now 
the the verse that I read is Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. And it says, the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To the one to one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Now, that verse just jumped out to, jumped out at me for some reason that morning, and I wanted to remember it. And so here was a perfect time. So I wrote that down first thing in a course of action, and then the first like you know uh, bullet point was pray always thanking God. Pray always thanking God. This is a consistent theme throughout the scriptures: is thanksgiving to God. You see this most prominently in God's dealings with Israel. Once Israel becomes a covenant people of God at Mount Sinai, then you see the necessity for thanksgiving in their lives. And it's one of the things that Paul talks about in Philippians. And it's one of the things we always uh, try and get our daughter to, to understand is no grumbling, no disputing, do everything uh, with a joyful heart, thanking God for what you have. Um, and the reason is that that God is good. He is good. But in times of trouble, we can easily despair. And, and it doesn't always go to despair. Some of us may go there. I mean, it may just go to all hope is lost, abandon ship. But uh, sometimes it's like incremental and it will start through like sadness in a situation. And then we kind of justify our despair, despair gradually through self-pity. And that's like the like, oh, I have every right to feel this way. I have every right to to feel sad. Don't tell me I shouldn't feel sad. Um, but self-pity will swallow you alive and it will kill your hope. Because it gives way to the flesh. Now, I'm um, I'm not saying, uh, you know, don't mourn, don't grieve. Like th- those things are natural in a, in a big situation like this. Um, you can grieve and you can mourn. You can do it healthy, though. Like never let it be unhealthy. Never let it go to self pity. It should always be in the light of the hope that we have in God. And in fact, Psalm fifty verse twenty two it tells us. It gives us a warning. It says, "Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart, and there be none to deliver." Then it goes on to the rest of the verse. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Now, the Bible tells us that, yes, we are all sinners and none seek after God. There is none righteous. No, not one. But there is one righteous, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ always gave thanks to God. He always glorified God. And so, We look to him because it is his righteousness that we have imputed to us because he was sinless and died a sinner's death on our behalf on the cross. When he was nailed to the cross, when he was lashed at the post, when he had the crown of thorns stuck on his head, uh, when he was mocked and ridiculed and beaten and spit upon. Like all of those things, those shames, those acts of of, of, uh, of mutilation, those were all a sinner's death, someone who was guilty. And Jesus was sinless. He did nothing wrong. The reason he was accused was a, uh, the reason he was crucified. It was all the result of a false accusation. Uh, but he stood there silently and he took it because the ultimate goal was the salvation of God's people, the salvation of those whom God loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I probably mess, messed that up with like different translations, but but 
Jesus always gave thanks. Even when they rolled the stone away from Lazarus's tomb, Jesus prayed and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. There's always, always thanksgiving. And Paul, in his letters, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. That's Colossians 1.3. Now, instead of reflecting bitterly in a time of crisis and moving into despair, reflect soberly, but you should always be reflecting on your situation in the light of the hope that we have in God. So how do you glorify God in times of crisis? Well, according to the verse, and it's not even just talking about times of crisis, but according to this verse, the way you glorify God is you offer thanksgiving. Offer thanksgiving. You deal with the situation The reality of the situation, it's real. I really lost my job, and I really don't have a consistent income right now. But I can reflect on that while rejoicing in the Lord. So um, in Romans 8.28, Paul writes, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good For those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. We know those things for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Um, You, if you trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation, if you know him as Lord and Savior, you can rest assured that God is working all things together for your good. Um, And not just for your good, but for the good of everyone who is called according to his purpose. And we know that whatever happens, God is good. God is faithful. God is working these circumstances. He's working my job loss. He is working your car problems. He is working your health situation together for our good, for good. And he's orchestrating these events to bring about the revelation of Jesus Christ to another brother and sister in Christ through the spreading of the gospel. So rejoice. Look, who cares if if I get a job and I die without Christ? What good is that for me? What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What good is it for you to have Christ and to go through these situations acting as if he doesn't exist or his promises aren't true? But his promises are true, and he loves you, and he's working these things out for your good. So even even if I die in a ditch, if that's God's purpose for me to die in a ditch, because there are brothers and sisters around the world in Christ who are being persecuted for their faith, and they will not die the, the sweetest of deaths. Um, they, they may starve to death. They may get beheaded. Um, there may be other things done to them, but God is even working those things together for good. Our situation right now, whatever it is, we can rejoice and be thankful because God loves us. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And those are things we have to remind ourselves of. These are light momentary trials in the light of eternity. So rejoice. Um, Back a couple years ago, Cassandra and I, we were traveling and uh, the transmission in our car went out. We were in absolutely no financial situation to handle that. And there was a temptation to despair. 
but we chose to trust in God. Yeah, we had to deal with the reality of the situation. It wasn't fun, but God delivered us out of that situation in a very unique and, and special way. Um, and uh, and he did that through through the offering of uh, of an unknown brother or sister in Christ, like uh, through the church. Um, and and we had no idea. We didn't ask for for help from anybody. We just prayed and and asked God to help. And we told people about our situation, but we trusted God, and God delivered us. Did He do it right then and there? I mean, He He supplied our needs in the moment. Um, but he ultimately brought about this great event that that paid for the transmission. Um, and that's not always going to be the case, but we had the opportunity to despair and to get angry and use that situation, our emotions, to drive a wedge between us as husband and wife or to get angry about this or that. But instead, we chose to be thankful and to thank God for who he is and his love for us. And that's the, the, that is the atmosphere that I want to create in my home. That um, though he slay me, I will praise him, as Job says. So take a minute today and ask God to forgive you for not being thankful if that's something that you're, you're dealing with. If you're going through a trial and you're not thanking God, you know, repent. It's a, you can ask God to, to forgive you, and he will. You can have that assurance. Even if you're not in a trial and you haven't been thankful to God, don't forget God. Your great seasons are still seasons allowed by God. Look, winter is not everybody's favorite season, but it's still a season created by God and it serves a purpose. Now, then take a moment and thank God for something, something, anything even if it's the breath in your lungs or the clothes on your back. But even if you barely have your necessities or your health, you have salvation through Jesus Christ. And that is eternal. So um, if, you, if you want a great sermon on this, I'm going to give you some recommendations at the end of these episodes. If you want a great sermon, H.B. Charles Jr. has a sermon titled How to Deal with Discouragement. How to Deal with Discouragement by H.B. Charles Jr. You can find it on, on YouTube if you type in H.B. Charles Discouragement. Um, I will try and link that in the uh, the podcast notes and on the, the blog. Um, that is a great, um, great sermon on dealing with discouragement in your life. Um, he's a phenomenal preacher. And that will really be an encouragement to you. It was to me, even before <laughs> I got laid off. It was, but... We don't have time for me to go into like all of the, the stuff going on prior to this. Um, that'll be for another episode. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today. So as you are in, in crisis, pray always giving thanks to God. So I will try and post at least weekly during this season. Um, this is the first episode of the Unemployment Chronicles. And uh, so starting Monday, hope to see another one from me. And uh, until then, God loves you, and he shows that through Jesus Christ. God bless. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Battle and the Bride. If you liked this episode, please subscribe, share, and leave a review. For more information, visit thebattleandthebride.com. If you have any questions, you can email us at thebattleinthebride at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and God bless.